At 8.15, we got our Thursday Night Football game. And I'm sorry, guys. I haven't been actually hitting any other NFL games except for Thursday Night. I'll give you my excuses. The first week, I had a very serious ankle injury. Like, absolutely, I sprained it. I could barely walk on that thing. And for basically all of Sunday, outside of when I needed to go to the bathroom or I needed water, I stayed in my bed the entire day. Um, so that was my excuse for not, and I had a test to study for, there was a lot of reasons why I didn't do it, the NFL games, in week one. In week two, honestly, that is a story for you guys, and I'll tell it to you real quick. I mean, there's probably not going to be a lot of people watching this video, but those who like to know about my stories is GGV. So I, and obviously at the University of Florida, and uh, I actually got to go home last weekend, and uh, I was very excited for that. But I didn't want to have to spend any of my time at my house actually, you know, recording or editing. Because I only get to spend a certain amount of finite time with the my mom and dad, with my brother, my cousins were in town, my aunt and uncle, and obviously my best friends in the whole wide world. I only get to spend a finite amount of time with them. I didn't want to waste any of that time recording or editing videos. So what I did, and I, I didn't really have time to, like, focus on it beforehand i had like a test that week um i had i had a lot of stats homework i needed to get done before the weekend there was a lot of stuff i needed to do before i left so i really only got to hit recording college football videos like that thursday i left friday morning at four o'clock so to get you the college football videos guys i grinded i absolutely grinded uh, I recorded all night, and I edited to 1.30 in the morning to get out those college football videos, and I was planning on doing the NFL videos, too, um, but it was just, there was not enough time to get those out there, and for them to be high quality at all, because I would have had been whispering because my roommate was asleep, and there's just a lot of reasons why I didn't want to get those videos out to you guys, they would have been low quality, they would not have been up to my standards, um, and I didn't want to give you guys low quality crap, um, so, I just ended in college football for the week. Uh, plus, my NFL videos don't get that many views. I, anyways, it's really just... I, I really only do the NFL videos for me. Uh, but, getting back into it. 8.15, we got Steelers, which are 1-1. One one, traveling to the Browns, which are 1-1. One one. Browns favorite by 4.5 on Amazon. We'll go over the injuries real quick. There's not that many. Only three total. Obviously, the big one for the Pats, Pittsburgh Steelers is they're, they're without TJ Watt. They're going to be without TJ Watt for a while. He is packing his youths on IR till at least week six. That's when they're hoping he comes back, and dang, do they need him. Last week against the Patriots showed it. They were not able to get any consistent pass rush going without him on the football field, and dang, do they desperately need him. Browns, on the other hand, are without two pretty significant playmakers on their football team. Defensive end Jadavian Clowney has an ankle injury. He's going to be out for this game. And cornerback Greedy Williams... Is a hammy. He's an IR at least till week five. So two more games after this, or actually two more games probably. This game, next game, if he's poss possibly back for week five. You could get him as early as a uh, not next week, but the week after that, two weeks from now. Um, and that could be pretty significant for a Browns team that really could desperately use a corner. I think the get game against the Jets showed that. Um, and honestly, probably one of the more heartbreaking losses of the week. Uh, I understand the Ravens. Blowing a 21-point lead in the fourth quarter against the Dolphins has that argument. Or even the Raiders blowing a 20-point lead against the Cardinals also has that argument. But Browns having a 13-point lead with a minute 40 left and the Jets having no timeouts and them somehow losing that football game is an absolute heartbreaker to lose. Um, it's just it's inexcusable. It's inexcusable if you're a Cleveland Browns fan, honestly. Honestly, kind of deserved. Uh, Cleveland Browns, they really, I'm not really not rooting for them. I don't know anyone in the, any NFL fan really rooting for the Cleveland Browns this season. They really don't deserve to win any football games for the way they handled Baker Mayfield and the fact they picked up Deshaun Watson. Um, he really is a horrible human being. And I hope you guys do lose a lot of football games for that, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, the Steelers are an interesting football team, right? Their offense is not explosive at all. And I don't know if I should be blaming Mitch Trubisky 
which is a quarterback I've always liked. The fact that Matt Canada is just an absolutely god awful offensive coordinator. Literally, no, uh, no interesting play calls at all. No, not a genius in any terms of the word. And he has so many threats offensively. Deontay Johnson, uh, Pat Fryermuth, Najee Harris. You have all of these threats at your disposal. Chase Claypool. You have all these threats at your disposal and you're just absolutely wasting them. Um, it's just kind of inexcusable if you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan the way that the offense has just been floundering recently. It's it's absolutely pathetic, uh, considering you have a competent quarterback in Mitchell Trubisky. You have a offensive line that is not very good, but is competent. Um, you have a running back who's absolutely amazing. You have a tight end that's amazing in Pat Fryer. You have two very good young wide receivers. You have an offense that should be prospering, and it's really not. The Browns have a little bit more of an excuse, and their offense hasn't even been that bad. Considering their quarterback, Jacoby Brissett, he has actually been having a competent offense. The defense has been the problem. I think that's going to be actually kind of interesting here. It's it's, uh, it's kind of like this, honestly. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I remember the storyline... Heading into the AFC Championship, I, I use this as an example all the time, when the Patriots were playing the Jaguars, was which one's going to give? Patriots elite offense or the Jaguars elite defense? Uh, but I thought always the more interesting matchup was the Jaguars incompetent offense and the Patriots kind of incompetent defense that year. Um, and that made that really kind of an interesting battle. I think it's going to be the same way this year. I think the Steelers defense is very good and the Browns offense has been doing pretty dang great. Um... And, but then the other side of things, I think it's going to be the more interesting. The Steelers' offense, which has been pretty much floundering through two games, and the Browns' defense, which has been floundering through two football games. Um, I think it's going to be interesting. I think the Steelers do come out with a victory on the road. I think they are the better football team, and I do think they're going to start their season 2-1. and one. I don't think expect this to be a super high-scoring football game, but given the Steelers the upset on the road.